I awoke from my slumber at 530, as a humid and overcast day begins. One the one hand, not a great day to take pictures in the garden, if you're me. But on the other hand, if you're Jimmy Anderson or Freddie Flintoff, it's a perfect day for getting late swing. Breakfast is served at half six and is a typical continental breakfast. Two types of bread, four meats, four cheeses, and four jams. Take your pick. Also, and most importantly, we have the coffee. This is where 90 house scores big over the CDK. We have a semi-industrial filter coffee machine. With real coffee and real caffeine. Normally it's 30 cents per cup, which in the grand scheme of things isn't too bad a price for good coffee. But between the hours of half six to half seven, it's free. So far I have drank five mugfuls and feel slightly unwell, and I love it. Now that I'm mostly settled into 90 house, I still need to learn the routines and timetables, now might be a good time to talk about alcohol prices in Austria. Now if you have ever traveled much around the world, or even just around Europe, you will know that the price of alcohol varies wildly from country to country, and region to region. Let me draw you up a quick list. 1. Scandinavia. Cannot afford to get drunk unless you have 1 euro millions that very day. 2. New Zealand. Can afford to get drunk once a month, if you have a good paying job. 3. England. Can get drunk most evenings if you are not too fussy what you drink. Also the socially acceptable amount of drinking here is far higher than anywhere else I've been. 4. Austria. Very cheap alcohol for a first world country. People are genuinely shocked when they see the prices. But what is considered liking a drink in the UK, is considered alcoholism in Austria. 5. South Africa. Okay, not really a fair comparison, but, when the rand was weak we had a three-course meal with wine at a swanky beach restaurant for the equivalent of five pounds. Good times. So how cheap is alcohol in Austria? Let me give you some prices, to see how they compare to your country. Vodka. 1 liter, 2 pints, at 37.5%. 6 euros 95. Wine. 2 liters, 4 pints, nearly 3 normal bottles, at 11%. 2 euros. Beer. A crate of 20 large cans, 9 tenths of a pint per can, at 5%. From 5 euros 50. I mean, 2 liters of wine at 11% for nothing more than pocket change. Woohoo! Austria. Bringing absolutely smashed under that tricky 2 euro mark. After speaking about this with a friend in England he said, how is everyone not mullered the whole time? And this raises a good point. It's the differences in culture between Central and Southern Europe, and the UK. In the UK I worked 10 hours a day, sometimes 7 days a week. In the evening, every evening, I would binge drink until I fell asleep. Then I would get up the next day, go to work, and then do it all again, and nobody saw anything wrong with that, including myself. Here in Austria, beer is normally sold in pubs, bars, and restaurants in a 330ml glass. Just bigger than half a pint, and having 8, 5 pints, over the course of a whole evening is considered a wild and crazy night out. Do bear in mind because the bars are open until maybe 4 or 5 in the morning, a night out could be 8 or 9 hours. In England I would cram 8 full pints into 4 hours regularly after work, often on an empty stomach. And this is where the two-fold problem lies, for me. Firstly, in Austria drinking all day is okay, but being drunk is not as acceptable as it is in the UK. Let me give you an example. Here in Austria we have a thing called Frühschoppen. Literal translation, early shopping. But what it in actuality is, is when a pub, or sometimes a whole village, has a sort of street party. There will be white beer and white sausages, or sometimes half a roast chicken, at 7 o'clock in the morning. Normally with a live umpa band there as well to keep you entertained that's right, beer for breakfast is not just socially acceptable, it's tradition. Also, the bakeries that open at 5 or 6 in the morning, so you can have fresh bread every day, all have a stamptish which roughly translates as a regular's table where the locals go for beer and fresh bakery items every day before the sun comes up. This is perfectly acceptable behavior here. In England, if you drink before midday, you're an alkit, 
but if you get drunk every single night, you're not. In Austria, drinking from the crack of dawn is fine, as long as you never get really drunk. If you fell asleep on a bench somewhere after a session in Austria you don't get woken up and told to go home, you get taken, sometimes against your will, to hospital. I can speak with some confidence on this subject. The second reason is that for 4 euros you can buy enough alcohol to anaesthetize a horse. So it's perfectly affordable hobby. Once you combine the different drinking cultures, and the lowers prices, and then you throw depression, hallucinations, the COVID lockdown and a highly addictive personality, into the mix, you have a perfect storm for being called an alcoholic in Austria. One of the things that has definitely changed in 90 House is the number of staff. Now it appears to be only one non-therapist on site, before it was two or even three sometimes. The change was illustrated today when the Grand Overlord, of 90 House, Frau Weinlich, lead a group session today. In 2017 this would have been unthinkable. She was very good as well. I'm going to make a complaint now that is going to make me sound like a bitch. It's a complete first world problem. I don't like the weights in the weight room, they are too small. Not the amount of weight you can load the bar with, but the physical size of the weights. Let me explain. In a proper fitness studio the weights are physically quite large. I'm not even talking about those oversized rubber monstrosities that crossfitters use, I'm talking about normal gym weights, often made with a metal core and then coated in rubber. This means that if you want to deadlift 60 kilos you put one 20 kilograms plate on each end of the 20 kilograms bar, and away you go. Because of the physical size of the weights on it, the bar sits 18 cm or so off the floor. In 90 house the heaviest individual weight we have is 10 kg, and that's fine, we have plenty of them. But, and here's the problem, not only are they lighter and therefore physically smaller weights, they have no rubber coating to embiggen them. Before you ask, yes, embiggen is a perfectly chromulent word. So now the bar sits only 5 cm off the floor. This may not sound like a big difference, but trust me on this it is. On the plus side, if I can get back some decent fitness with this setup, I should be flying once I get back to my normal gym. Just had lunch, it was chicken in mushroom sauce, with rice and peas. To steal a line from toddler tea, rice and peas and chicken are nice, taste so good me have to have it twice. Have just completed my first therapy therapy with my news therapist hair bicycle. My first male therapist, my fifth overall. I spoke about what I wanted to achieve with my time in 90 house. He seemed to think it was possible, so as such, I left my hour feeling positive about my next 12 weeks. Only the mandatory sport hour left to do today then we have free time. I'll get this turned into a video, do an hour's Mandarin, then turn in for the night. Tomorrow is another day.